Hey everyone, this is part 9 of working with strings using the index of method. So let us consider the case that we have a substring that we want to search for in another string. We can do so using the index of method. So here's an example, and we'll copy this over to our replet and have a look at it. Come on. So index of substring, let's move this over a little bit so everything's on a nice and even line. So index of substring 1 is going to be equal to google.index of oog. So oog is basically this portion of the string, which is nicely highlighted there. I'm actually glad that it does that highlighting now. I was not glad previously, but now I guess we're okay with it. So the index where the substring is found is going to be uh, logged to the console. And we've got another one called the index of substring 2 is in defense of one's principles and the index of e. So um, in this one, we're going to say the index where the substring is first found. And the reason for that is that there's more than one e in here, right? So if we highlight this, there's an e here, 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 and here. But when we say index of e, it's actually going to tell us by default what the first case of that, or where the first case of that is found. So if we log this to the console, we should see for Google and Oog, we should see, I think, 1. And then for the second one, we should see 0, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, I think 4. So if we see 1 and 4, hopefully we're looking good. 1 and 4, excellent. So that's basically the long and short of how index of works. Now we're going to get a little bit fancy with index of because index of is kind of fun. So here's that same string again, but in this one we're not going to be looking for the, the first instance of it. We're going to be looking at the uh, first index after a certain point in the string. So the reason that we're doing that is because there can be certain cases where you want to find the second, third, fourth uh, instance of a character within a string or a substring within a string an index of provides us the like ability to do that. So here's a demonstration of it. Let's think about where the seventh character would be. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So essentially what we're asking for is where the first E in this substring is after the point where the cursor is right now. So if we think about that, 7, 8, 9, I think we should be looking at 9 here. So let's hit run, see if we get 9 we get 9, which is cool. So here's another thing. If we were to say at 9, what do you think we would get? Well, I can't really hear you, so let's just hope that you said the correct answer. But if we run this, we're going to get 9. Now, the principle that you should notice here is that if we ask for the instance of a substring after a certain index, if the substring is located at that index, we're going to get back that index. But if we are going to say plus 1, we'll get the index that follows that one, which would be 16 in this case. So if you're having trouble with this concept, uh, don't worry about it too much. It's a rather tricky concept and a little bit of practice like we're going to do and in the coding challenge and you know just through your coding career will be the kind of thing that solidifies this idea if it's something that you need to solidify. Sometimes you won't really need to. So ah, here's one other concept is let's say that we're looking for a substring and we don't find it. Uh, what we're going to get is negative 1. And that's just kind of like a definition issue. A lot of times this can be a very useful way to try to figure out what to do based on a substring's being present or not being present. And the idea would be that if the index of a substring is equal to negative 1, we know that substring is not present. Uh, and if you heard that, that was something dropping in my sink, which I don't know why anything's dropping in the sink because it's just me here, but that's okay. Uh, we can also do this with variables. So here is a... Uh, a lot of computer science introductory courses will feature things with DNA strands just because they're very useful for these kinds of exercises. So um, you want to figure that a DNA strand is a series of codons. There are start codons and stop codons. I don't know why DNA strand would be highlighted, but that's okay. So a stop codon is TAA, and here is where that stop codon is. And so the index of the stop codon is going to be equal to the variable in question, index of the stop code on that we're looking for. So it should be at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it should be at 6. So if we run this and we get 6, we are in decent shape. Excellent. Now let's further complicate this idea and we're going to talk about how to find the, in the, the index of the second stop code on. And we're going to do it in two steps. One is going to be we're going to find the first stop code on. The second one is going to be based on that index, we're going to find the second one. 
So here's the DNA strand. And if we look at the stop codon, this is going to delightfully help us out by showing us that there's one here, and there's also one here. We're going to find the index of the first stop codon by asking the DNA strand to give us the index of that stop codon. Then based on that index of the first stop codon, we're going to use that to find the second one by searching the DNA strand for that same stop codon at the index of the first stop codon, which we found here, plus one. Now that we have all of that, we should be able to paste or sorry, uh, log to the console. So if this was 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So somewhere around 22 because I'm not great at counting like that. Excellent, 22. And one more version, but this one just with variables where we demonstrate that if the stop codon is not present, we're going to get negative 1 as our result. So here's our DNA strand. There is no stop codon. As you can see, it hasn't highlighted anything. And so when we ask what the index of the stop codon is for this combination, we're going to get negative 1. A very useful concept to keep in mind in the event that you want to do something based on either finding a substring or not finding a substring. So let's talk about the index of coding challenge. We are going to complete a function that takes in two parameters, a string and a substring, and returns the index of the string where the substring can be found. Your function should create an index variable and assign it to a call of the index of method on the string and passing okay so we're gonna assign it to a call of the index of method on the string and passing substring as an argument and return the index variable so in case that's kind of difficult to parse that's what we're doing here we're calling the index of method on the dna strand passing the stop code on uh, below are examples of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function, apply index of. Very simple approach here. We're just going to be following basically the documentation exactly, but not the documentation for finding the second codon or the second instance of a substring. Or for, well, that one kind of does apply, but we're not going to be doing any sort of uh, wrinkles to this, which is to say we're not looking for the second stop codon or the second instance. We're just looking for the first instance. So the basic documentation that we have here with just uh, the index of the substring, just the string dot index of the string, the substring we're looking for, that's, that's what's going to get the job done for us. So let's scroll down here. We're going to grab our stub, paste it in, move this back over because well, I don't really have a reason, but I'm going to grab our test cases, which are starting to become a little bit more robust, but that's okay. It's the same idea. We come up with a couple of variables to call the function with. We supply those variables as arguments, and then log to the console whatever result we get, compare that to what we think we should get, and then go from there. So if we, well, we're not going to run both these yet. We're going to run it after we write the function. So create an index variable, assign it to the index inside of a string where substring can first be found, which if we recall the documentation is just string.index of substring. Then we return the index variable. So if we run this and we get 5 and 11, we know we are approaching good shape. After we come back, we'll go ahead and paste in the completed function. And then we'll come to our synonyms for good and shape to find out what kind of good shape we're in this time. So excellent. And we are in fruitful pattern. Our pattern is fruitful, which is an admirable state of being to be in. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And we'll see you in the next one.